Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. I am over another neighbor's house. We are so blessed to have great neighbors and it is my pleasure to help Phil and his wife Denise to plant some planter boxwoods that we have in the very back of us. So I say that Phil was very lucky. He found these sprinter boxwoods from Proven Winners, which if you watch my videos, you know that I absolutely love them. And I would not suggest any other boxwood other than the sprinter boxwood. It does really good here in Charlotte, North Carolina, zone eight. So Phil already kind of put in place and um, spaced the sprinter boxwoods out for me. And then we kind of took a look and I'll show you, there's these on this side are a little bit further back. And these sprinters right here are a little bit closer. He's got a metal, uh, what do you call that? A edging that will help keep the, well, you can see that we have pines here. So it kind of helps keep the pine needles out from entering into this garden. Well, plus the grass growing down and, the hill. And the grass growing into the hill. So it helps both. So you can see that these sprinter boxwoods were on the this side of the edging and these sprinter boxwoods were placed further back. So I asked him just, you know like stand back and like do you like the look of it further back to see what he liked and he actually liked the look further back because it's up on a hill and we're able to see from his patio that the boxwoods just show off a little bit better so we're gonna place them higher up on the hill right that so, sounds great right. so um he's got some gorgeous perennials and shrubs in this garden space that he has right here and he's built a retaining wall also to be able to bring everything up higher because they have a patio back there and then everything is up on a hill here and then the main road past these pines are on the other side of these pines so these pines are for more for privacy and to i guess like um diminish noise right would you say that well it gives yeah it gives privacy and you know plus you know, it, it replaced all the trees that were torn out during the original right. setting up of the subdivision. Yeah. But I will say that this wall was the idea of my wife. Oh. She is like, we need a little bit more to look at in the back of our right. yard. Her grandmother always said, make your backyard where you look at everything beautiful right. so that you can enjoy it every day. Yep, so we're creating our own oasis here. Mm -hmm. So this is like your space, your personal space. You want to be able to come out here and enjoy nature and birds and the beauty of all these blooms, right? So, and then Phil was also, he told me that this is what he uses to keep his rabbits out. So he does have a lot of deer that run right back here. So they come from the space over well, further they, from they, us. They've come up along that fence line, they yeah. come down from the hill, but we also have rabbits and squirrels and other animals and they were eating my uh, plants so using repels all right. stop the problem just sprinkle around the edge and then even if it rains it's still there nice so I've used this product before and I've used this in the granular and in the um, spray mm -hmm. and then another product that I like to use is I must garden as well and it doesn't does this smell the granular like a not, little bit not yeah. much so um, I do like the I must garden because it smells like cinnamon and clothes and stuff like that too. But that's two great products that you can use to keep the deer and rabbits away. So I'm going to turn the camera around and we're going to look at some of these blooms that he has closer up and show you closer to the boxwoods and then we're going to get them planted. And at the very end of the video, I'm going to do a little garden tour of all the beautiful things that Phil and Denise have here in their garden. Okay, so this is the sprinter boxwood that I absolutely love. It's probably my number one green, evergreen shrub. I just love it. It's soft, it's fluffy. Love the foliage on that, and it does really, really good here in the south. So like I said, this one is called a sprinter boxwood. It says that it's deer proof right here on the label. Deer proof doesn't mean that deer aren't gonna, if they're hungry enough, they're gonna eat anything, but I've got probably a hundred in my garden and they have not touched mine so far. So let me tell you about the features for this sprinter. Sprinter boxwood is a fast growing and adds evergreen winter interest to landscapes. Use this classic shrub as an edging hedge or specimen. Now you might be like, Kim, you are in the shade. Why are you being crazy and all planting this in the shade? So this plant does well in sun or shade. So there's not too many evergreens that I know of that will do good in the shade, but this one does wonderful. 
So this printer has a hardiness of 539 and it gets two by two and a four feet tall and wide. So we're looking, I usually like to keep these at two feet. So right, mine are right at probably at my knee level. Of course, we're gonna plant this and it's gonna get shorter, but I usually like to keep mine trimmed right at my knee and they respond really well to being trimmed as also. So me and Phil, we're gonna use our power planter auger. I have the three inch auger. You can purchase the larger auger, but I'm just gonna make three small holes and mix it all up. I have some black cow that we're going to throw a couple of handfuls into each hoe to help amend this clay soil. And actually, Denise told me this a little bit more sandy up here. Is that what you told me, Phil? Very sandy. Very sandy up here on the hill. So, but anyways, it's not gonna hurt to throw a couple of handfuls to help amendment, amend it. And then we're gonna throw some on top as well, just to give it some little extra fertilizer. And inside each hole, you will see me plant everything that I plant with this Espoma Biotone. This helps root development. So I never cut out and miss on this step. So we're gonna get to planting. All right, so how far do you want this? I was kind of like using maybe my foot. But. Yeah, I think so. That's fine. So well, that's I about, use... let's do 12 inches. Yep. Put the thing right at 12, there 12 right there. Mm -hmm. Now once we start the first hole, then we can just measure. Maybe we can do, yeah, we'll see. Oh, it feels kind of hard up here. Well, when you go in, it'll be sand. Oh, well, there might be roots from these evergreens, too. Oh, it could be. just had to almost kill himself to cut but look so we have some obstacles that we're gonna encounter up here to plant especially in hard clay is that you want this plant to be able to drain away from the plant you don't want to create a water bath and all the water to be able to stay right into this hole so that's something that you don't want to do and I feel like that's why I have really good success at my plants in my own garden so right here is the ground level so you can see if I come over I'm above the ground and I'd say I'm probably at least an inch so I'm pretty happy with that and we're on a hill, so we may have a little bit of mounding to do because it may be a little bit lower here, a little bit higher here. So pretty happy with that right there. So do you think that looks straight in the hole there? Pretty happy with that? Uh, tilt a little bit that way. This way? There you go. All right. So then we're gonna use all this soil that we just took out of the hole from my auger which cuts it up really fine. That's another reason why I like this auger as well, is that it gets the soil really fine and it's real easy to backfill. So we have all of this that we just took out from the hoe and I'm gonna use all of it. And we're gonna mound it up on the plant. Now you don't wanna make sure you don't cover these roots right here because they're used to being already exposed. So just mound it up all the way around my foot and tamp it down so we can get all the air pockets out. And bring some of this back up. Then I'm gonna 
gonna take some of this black towel and we're gonna just top dress this plant right here. Now it is early in the spring, so it probably wouldn't hurt Phil to um, give this some more fertilizer with plant tone. That's what I like to use in my own garden. I don't think it really hurts if you use biotone, plant tone, as long as you're fertilizing something with all your perennials and annuals at least once a year. And I've already done all my garden probably at the end of March, early April is when I fertilized everything, but I like to use plant tone for this one. All right, so we have a ruler and we are going to go off this metal edging right here. So from off the edging, we went 12 inches, but of course I went from the pot. So we're gonna go 12 inches off here just to make sure it's straight. Did we use 12 inches? It was 12 inches, wasn't it? 12 inches. Yeah. Gosh, I gotta come in more. All right, so we're using this ruler as our spacing and we're using this edging to go off of that. So I'm going from 12 inches to here to the pot and then we're going to go 20 inches from the mid portion of the plant to the mid portion of this plant as well. And that way it assures that our spacing is going to be pretty even all the way down. So Phil and Denise bought 11 boxwoods from Home Depot and they paid a little bit less at Home Depot than they would a regular nursery. So they bought 11 and they need to add one more right over there. So we got one more hole dug so he can just plop it into the ground. So that's going to make a really nice hedge in two to three years. That's just going to fill in really nicely and give them some winter interest along with these pines that'll give them winter interest as well. But she's got some gorgeous perennials and shrubs in here. So me and Denise are gonna go over some of these. We're gonna start on this side right here. So this tree right here is a red bud, right Denise? Mm -hmm. A red bud and she's got two on each side. It looks like she's a lot like me and she likes symmetry. So we have two nice good size red buds. Do they bloom? They bloom a couple times in the spring. Okay. Real pretty red. Real pretty red pretty blooms? Red. Oh, I bet that would be pretty. So Denise needs to send me a picture. You have it in bloom? I do not. You do not? <laughs> all right, so these little pansies are still hanging on. I love all the variety of color that she has right here. The red and this purple is so pretty. Pansies do good here until they, the heat gets to them. And then she's got a mum on the side here. And a tomato growing there that's already got a little tomato on there. And then we got the peonies. And this is a peony that's already out of bloom. What color are those, Denise? They're light pink. Light pink. I'm working on getting the dark purpley red to get oh. healthier it okay 
kind of shrunk down. There's one the here end. and then one right here on the side. Look at that. Budlia. And is that amethyst? Is that what color that is? Yes. Look how pretty that bud is right there on that proven winners. Punkster, punkster butterfly bush. Mm -hmm. And I've talked about those so many times. Actually, Denise said that I inspired her to go out and find one. And she found this one at Home Depot as well. Mm -hmm. And that plant looks really healthy. And then she has a hosta. Some hostas over there. Sedums in the back yeah. of the tree. Have some sedum. There's three. And then we're not really sure what this plant right here is, right? Mm -hmm. She said it what does it purple? It it's has got a real pretty, real fragile purple flower. Okay. That comes out. It's real pretty. So I'm excited to see what color that plant is when it comes out. And then here against the wall is some dianthesis. And we just keep adding to that every year. After yeah. a few die, we put a few new ones in and <laughs> I told her that I thought it'd be really pretty if she had some um, like bubblegum, super petunias or jazzberry or the uh, white and then some potato vine. And I thought it'd be pretty to come down this wall. I thought that would give it some added look. So she's gonna look for that plant, those kind of plants too. And then she has some cone flowers that are budding up here. And then is that Stella Dior Daylily? Yes. Stella Dior Daylilies. They bloom all summer long. That is a good flowering plant that gives you lots of color. Love the yellow. And then some salvia. And then look at this clematis. This is so pretty. I'm assuming that's a double flower. Uh, it, yeah. Definitely. Oh my gosh. Hey, it is so gorgeous. So she's got two, and this one's thriving, and the other one may not get enough sun. It she... started out very strong in the season, and then it's kind of petered out now. Mm. And this one took over on the right. But that is so pretty. Mm -hmm. And then she's got some uh, calla lilies. And these are Easter lilies. Easter lilies. Did you transplant? Okay, transplant Easter lilies. And they're about ready to bud out. Look at this bee on this. This is a Spanish lavender. I love bees. It is enjoying life on that plant right there. And then again, we're not sure what that is. It's the same. Oh, it's got a different leaf. Very yeah. similar. In Not sure what this plant is. And look to the silver. Yeah. If anybody knows, I was wondering if it was, what did I, oh, what did I say? I thought it might be bee balm, but she's not sure. If anybody knows, you can give me a shout out onto my comment. And more salvia. She planted some flocks back there, but not sure if it's coming up. What is this orange flower? It's really pretty. Is it's that? A, it's a perennial. It's it's it, just kind of kind of like the, from the cone flower. Family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it does look like a cone flower. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit different leaf. It's really pretty. And this is a clematis that she said that came out strong and then just kind of petered out a little bit. Do you know? Everything has its own mind. Dianthesis. Is this coneflower too, right here? These are um, black-eyed Susan. Black-eyed Susan. So this is gonna give her a lot of color in the fall, more towards the end of the summer, mm -hmm. which is nice. Like you always want to like go to the nursery each month and find what's in bloom. And then if you do that throughout the year, then you're gonna have something that will bloom throughout the year. That's a nice way to do it. Yes, we have a couple little holes left to fill, yeah. but really we were yeah, easy very to happy fill. with uh, what happened yeah. over the winter this year. And this is some daylilies that are coming up, and this is a unique plant. What's the name of that one? A spurge. Spurge. S-P-U-R-G-E? Mm-hmm. 
I'll throw the name up on the screen. And that's a variegated spurge, but then yeah. some of the solid ones uh, came up. up yeah, too. this is all on the same plant right mm -hmm. here. We got those at Pikes last fall. Very unique. So to give, a, give a little color. Yeah. It gives you that blue mm -hmm. in the garden. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to like have all shades of the rainbow. So blue, yellows, reds, greens. So you can see that she's everything has different textures, different colors. So you get a little bit of blue from this as well. But everything stands out against each other. Nothing blends in, which is what you, you're trying to achieve. And another mom. And then of course, Another, the other red bud that she said. Let's go around this garden and look at the boxwoods. All right, so this is the hedge of boxwoods that we just planted. Pretty happy with how they lined up. We used our rulers and we had 12 inches off this edging right here, 12 inches off the edging, and we spaced this 20 inches apart. And they'll grow two feet by two feet and then they're easy to also to trim up also so and like i said they do like shade so these are going to do great i have some on my side garden that have done really well in the shade they get morning sun but you can see that they get some dapple shade right here as well so they'll they'll be really happy so that's what 11 boxwoods look like do you see that robin over there He's after some worms, or she. Usually the more colorful birds are more vibrant. Do you know that? Like God made Kill the men, the men the more children. vibrant. Yeah. You know, I guess the males have to have some kind of, he, he made more women more vibrant. So that's all that matters. Yeah. We get happy hour here with the birds at about 5.30 at night. We get two sets of cardinals and about 10 little chickens and red pinches, so it's <laughs> nice. Kind of fun. So looking up here on the hill, on the opposite part of the retaining wall, let me just kind of pan and show you what it looks like up here. This is the boxwoods on the other side. And then this is what her patio looks like. And there's Phil. Hey Phil. So this is the landscape around the patio. They have a palm tree. And what did you say these were, Denise? She just planted these. They're like a bird of paradise. Bird, bird of paradise. And the, the ones in front are like a red hibiscus. Okay. And then she's got a water feature. Everybody needs some sort of water sound in their garden. It's so soothing and relaxing. Grasses look really good. Do you know what the name of the grasses are? No. no? They look, they're really pretty. And we chop those down to about 12 inches. And yeah, Denise said last spring. last spring down to 12 inches. I love how they just kind of fall over. They're like in a round and they just kind of swoop down. It's really pretty. They've got three right here. And these are irises, you said? Mm -hmm. Irises, but they've gone out of bloom. I bet they were real pretty when they were in bloom. They're really full. And this is just part of the landscape. Encore. Encore, oh really? Wow, they're big. Right. These are Encore azaleas, he said, and they bloom pink. So some hollies here. This gives them some privacy from their neighbors. And there's a magnolia tree, just like I have in my garden. Is that a little gem? Mm -hmm. A little gem. And I think this is so pretty with this creeping Jenny. This was a water feature that she had. And then she just added all these little, I think there's snapdragons in there. Mm -hmm. And the creeping Jenny is a perennial. And mums. And mums. Okay. 
I love that look of that creeping Jenny right there. It's just so pleasing to the eye. And then all of our magnolias are starting to bloom. There's one starting to come out. So the regular magnolias get huge, but these little gems, I think they're supposed to get about 15 to 20 feet tall, but you can keep them trimmed up as well if they're starting to get out of control. Mm -hmm. I have three of these in my garden. And then this is a crepe myrtle. What color is your crepe myrtle? This is a light purple. Light purple? It must be, is it the mus muscogee like I have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, same as mine, she said. And then we have a red one on the other okay. side. Okay. And then she's got some more grasses. And this is the pine trees in the back. In the garden that we just went over. Have a little lamb looking over everything and this is their pride and joy miss coco say hi say hi she likes that biotone on my hand yeah so this piece right here is very unique this is from denise's side of the family her grandfather gave that to her it's 120 years old and i just love how it's rustic and different and unique surrounded with some river rock and then she's got two different mandevillas that are in here i love the red that she has and this really soft yellow that is a beautiful soft yellow and then phil added another metal piece so this will like kind of climb on that metal piece really pretty tropical looking now these do not, will not winter over in our area. It's too cold for winter, but it is very pretty in the summertime, so we'll still get a long use out of it. You can bring them inside if you'd like, but I don't really have a lot of room inside. And then more grass. This table looks cute with this planter on it. Gerber daisies. We winterized those. For okay. Last year, nice. So. You kept them in your garage, or what did uh, you do? Up in our storage. Okay. Area. Nice. Table, so yeah. Well, that's done really well. Mm -hmm. Took about five of them. And then some variegated shrubs. Kind of hides their air conditioning unit there from their side porch, so they don't see that. And this is it looks like a knockoff. Knock, knockout rose, mm -hmm. knock off. It needs pruning. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So my roses need pruning too. But this is a tree form. Oh, that's hibiscus. the hardy hibiscus. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Hardy hibiscus. There you go. And then another magnolia that kind of flanks the other side. So it kind of brings it all together in the same hollies on this side too. So this also gives them privacy from their neighbors. And then another crepe myrtle. So symmetry on both sides. So this kind of shows you the symmetry, crepe myrtle, crepe myrtle, magnolia tree, magnolia tree. <laughs> and this is the patio area. And this is the retaining wall. So I am in love and I wish I had room for this hydrangea. This is the oak leaf hydrangea. Does it turn colors in the fall? Yeah, reddish. Reddish color. Let's get up close to this bloom. I love just the different texture that it has on this bloom versus the panicle. It is so pretty. But they, they're bigger. I wish they would come out with a smaller variety. I really think this plant is gorgeous. And I walked up on the side of her house and I was like, oh my gosh, it is so pretty. And then on the way down this way, what is this? Burning bushes. Burning bushes. So they turn red in the fall. Oh, this turns red in the fall. So it's gonna be real pretty fall interest. And he has three of these. 
So this is where his shade is on this side of the house, which is why that hydrangea over there does really, really good. And this is another hydrangea. Look at the color on this one. Oh, that is so pretty. Love it. Yeah, so pretty. These will make some gorgeous cut flower blooms inside. Have you ever done that, no, Denise? No, I have trouble with hydrangeas. They, um, they don't stay firm in the yeah. sun. Oh, okay. I'll have to do that. And this right here is a lilac. She's from up north. Where, where from, Michigan? Minnesota. Minnesota. And their, their thing up there was lilacs. Of course, it's really hard for us to do lilacs here, but I just put one in my garden, the reblooming lilac. So she doesn't really know this variety, but it's happy here. So when you bring something from the south and it has a hardiness zone of say seven, then you wanna put that plant more in like morning sun and afternoon shade because it's gonna just be too hot. But if you're taking a risk at something like this, then you want to make sure it gets all afternoon shade. So I hope you enjoyed this garden tour and I hope that you enjoyed us planting these sprinter boxwoods and it gives you an idea how to do a sprinter boxwood hedge. They're from Proven Winners and I love that plant and I think it was like one of the number one shrubs of the year as well. And thanks for Phil for letting me come and help him and do this video. And hey, thank you, Kim, because without you, they wouldn't be so straight and planted oh, so well. Oh yeah. <laughs> and thanks to my power planter because that was like concrete up there and that mm. power planter like really went through that hard soil up there and uh, gave us that nice consistency to uh, backfill with as well. So as far as I was like looking at this garden, so this garden gets morning sun and afternoon shade. So I was telling, Denise that she can like plant any kind of shade loving plant back here. She could plant hellebores, she can do the pulmonaria, she can do more hostas, she could do the Jacob's Ladder. And what else do we talk about? Oh, we talked about the petunias. I thought it'd be pretty to have like bubble gum or jazzberry and then the potato vine like growing down this wall as well. So it's really endless what she could do with this garden with like shade loving plants and then it gets enough sun in the morning that she could do sun loving as well. So I hope you enjoyed this garden tour and remember that one plant brings you a little well-being, five plants brings you 60% well-being, and 10 plants brings you maximum well-being and I say Phil and Denise is maximized. Right. Woo, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.